Hey everyone, we are now in the year 20XX, which is the same time period that the Mega Man games take place in. And guess what? We have robots now, and advanced AI, sort of. So how do our robots, AI, and overall technology today compare with the predictions of the Mega Man games? The first Mega Man game came out in the year 1987. Have we reached the technological goals that Mega Man set decades ago? Everything in Mega Man starts with one Dr. Thomas Light. He received the Nobel Prize in Physics for advancing robotics and AI after creating nine robot masters. He created Blues as a prototype, Rock and Roll as his assistants, and then he created six commercial level robot masters that would do actual work and contribute to the economy. For example, one of them was Gutsman who works in a construction site, and Elecman who works in a power plant. Dr. Wily, the villain of these games, reprograms the robot masters so they go rogue. Dr. Light feels responsible, and with Rock offering his robot body, converts Rock into a combat robot. Thus, Mega Man is born. Then you know, Mega Man fights the rogue robots, and that's the premise of the game. These Mega Man events occur in the year 2008. Looking back, these predictions are hilariously optimistic. But hey, it was the 80s in Japan, and Moore's Law was still going strong. Did we have the same robotic capability in 2008? No. This is Boston Dynamics in 2009, and yeah, I don't think this is capable of doing any platforming. A lot of humanoid robots during this time are slow, and the AI just isn't there. But if we fast forward 15 years, we get Atlas in 2023, and this robot, oh, this is a good robot. Atlas is not a statically programmed robot. It uses AI to perform actions in real time. Do I think Atlas can clear some of Mega Man's stages? Movement wise? Yeah. He probably can't shoot lemons or fight though. And he won't be able to swim or withstand high heat. But overall, from a sensor and actuator point of view, Atlas's movements are comparable to Mega Man's. So you're probably saying, okay, it can jump, walk and stuff. But does it have good AI to think like a robot master? But a robot master's AI is not as advanced as you think they are. Like Cutman, for example. All he knows how to do is cut. Cutman will never ask, why do I cut? It's similar to your Roomba. After it's done cleaning, it will silently wait at its station until it's time to clean again. Okay, but surely Mega Man and some other unique robots show some advanced AI. Well, canonically, Mega Man's AI never goes above the age of 10. He does show some fictional robotic attributes like being resistant to corruption and some artificial consciousness, but even he stays true to his purpose, helping Dr. Light. Our AI today, from a facts, logic, or language point of view, is definitely smarter than a 10-year-old, but it lacks intuition, imagination, or emotional development. We do see some emotional intelligence from Mega Man, and Mega Man's reasoning capability is greater than what we have today. So as of this video, our AI is lacking in emotion and reason, but excels in facts and logic. There is something else that Dr. Light is working on during this time. Let's come back to it after we talk about the world of Mega Man. Technology in the Mega Man world is not static. When Dr. Light created these robot masters, he opened Pandora's box in a sense. The technology is out there, it's going to be built upon, and he can no longer control what it's going to be used for. After the disastrous events of the first game, the government banned Robot Masters. But in 2009, we see Wily create his own Robot Masters. Then in 2012, another scientist joins in. By the year 2013, Robot Masters have become a worldwide phenomenon, as the first annual robot tournament takes place. If someone released an AI robot today, hypothetically, how long would it take to become a worldwide phenomenon? There are some examples in our world we can compare it to. Like the iPhone. The first iTouch came out in the year 2007, and by 2012, the iPhone was a worldwide hit. But the iPhone was cost effective and relatively cheap compared to a robot master. You would have to compare manufacturing robot masters to manufacturing cars. It's affordable, but it's gonna be an investment. The first car came out in the year 1886, and it took 30 years for it to become popular. So because of the Robot Master's high price tag, I think it's going to take a decade or two to become popular after its release. 
Let's finish up the classic Mega Man series with some honorable mentions. We see robots going into space, which is comparable to the Mars rover. We see time travel in the games, which we are going to ignore. Since a lot of the games take place in factories, it's hard to get a sense of what the world is like. It's like trying to understand England from Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. From a few ending scenes, Earth is relatively the same. Around 2014, Mega Man sees some self-driving cars, robots driving cars, and more unique skyscrapers. There's some stages that are floating, but um, suspending large amounts of land in the troposphere is not cost effective. It's not fair to say Dr. Light sees Mega Man as a machine. He definitely sees Mega Man more than that, like a son. He advocates frequently for machines to be able to live alongside humans, not as servants, but as friends. It's the same way I look at those delivery robots and hope it doesn't get hurt along the way. He also knows that this Mega Man, although great, has his limitations. So in 2016, he completed work on a new robot, Mega Man X. Mega Man X could not be released right away. He had to train his neural network for 30 years. Okay, I made that part up. He was sealed away to run diagnostics for 30 years. Unfortunately, Dr. Light is too old at this point and would not be alive to see Mega Man X released. For most of these predictions, we've been trailing for a decade or two, but creating something like Mega Man X in our world? Yeah, I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Before we jump into Mega Man X, we have to talk about another set of predictions during this time. In another life, Dr. Light does not get into robotics. Instead, he gets married and has kids in Japan. It's not clear if he moved to Japan or he is Japanese, but his name is Dr. Hikari, which means Dr. Light. Instead of robotics, Dr. Hikari works on computer networks. Alongside Dr. Wily, he creates the internet and something called the Soulnet, where humans can connect with each other on a deeper level. It's something Facebook could have been if it wasn't, you know, Facebook. He stores some of his life events on the internet and lays the groundwork for Mega Man, but he's not able to complete Mega Man. So I think he's unable to create Mega Man because he's a dad now. He's busy, and since he has a real son, he doesn't need Mega Man as his adopted son. This all happens in the year 19xx. His son, Yuchiro Hikari, also works with computers, and after he grows up, he creates net navigators or net navvies to, you know, navigate and retrieve information on this new network. He is the one that creates Mega Man EXE. That's right, this Mega Man is a computer program. So how Mega Man is created is science fiction. Yuchiro Hikari has twin sons, Lan and Hub, but Hub has a heart condition and sadly passes away. Yuchiro combines his deceased son's DNA with the NetNavi, and that's how you get Mega Man EXE. He gives EXE to Lan, and from them, we experience the world. So this game came out in 2001, and it takes place around 2010. By then, the internet was already a thing, so that's not really a prediction. But everything else in this world, man, were they spot on. EXE's world has a computer and AI in literally everything. Oh, don't get me started on the smartphones they carry. Every person has a PET personal terminal, which houses your customized AI program that you use to navigate local or global networks. It's a smartphone with AI on it. Smartphones came out seven years after Battle Network did, but I guess cell phones and PDAs were already a thing, so eh. You can surf the net with your PC like a normal person, or you can have your AI navigator crawl the net and retrieve information for you. The network is pretty slow though, it took me about three minutes to retrieve information from a chat board. The internet in our world has a lot of information, and we humans cannot consume the vast amount of content out there. If it doesn't exist on the first page of Google, does it exist at all? Wouldn't it be great if there was some navigator that can crawl sites for all relevant information and give it back to us in a bite-sized manner? We don't have an animated virtual assistant though. I guess Microsoft's Clippy was good enough. The next thing that these games predicted is that there's a computer in everything. Embedded devices have taken over our world. My coffee machine is connected to the internet, just like the game. You can control the temperature of your living room halfway across the world. That doesn't come without its downsides though. An interconnected world is always under threat of cyber attacks. And that's the main premise of the Battle Network games. We see smart ovens catch fire and hospitals shut down during a critical time. Not to mention the numerous viruses that affect personal computers and other devices. There are instances when AWS goes down and people can't use their doorbells or vacuums because they need a connection to the cloud. Makes you wonder, is Battle Network an utopia or a cautionary tale? Okay, so what technologies are we lacking? 
Well, it's AI. The NetNavis and Battle Network are very similar to humans. Base in Battle Network is an independent Navi and he crawls the net on his own will. It's basically AGI and it's something we have not reached yet. Society in Battle Network also embraces AI. One example is the judge tree, where human prosecutors and defense would present a case and an AI judge tree would determine the punishment. Well, in one of the plot lines, Lan's father is arrested for alleged hacking. And what punishment does the judge tree give him? The electric chair. And everyone's just like, well, if the AI says so, it's never been wrong before. Well, it turns out the AI was hacked, but that doesn't stop police robots from attacking the citizens. Looks like in the future, we're going to have a new form of police brutality. Anyways, we don't have the capability for AI, let alone trusting AI to that extent. Yet. So 20 years after Battle Network, a lot of the technology is on par with the game. We still have 75 years to achieve the rest. There is so much more to talk about here. The undernet, minorities, online banking, and some really weird dialogue. I freaking love Battle Network. Let me know if you want me to keep talking about it. Coming back to Mega Man X, which takes place in the previous timeline, but in the year 21XX. Since it's so far ahead in the timeline, there's going to be a lot of speculation. Dr. Light created X, a new Mega Man who basically achieved AGI. He was created in 2016 but needed to run diagnosis for 30 years. Well, nobody woke him up after 30 years. It was only until Dr. Kane, an archaeologist, found X 100 years later. Dr. Kane marvels at the technology and when he releases it, it's a hit. People start mass producing robots called Reploids which are replicas of X and within a few decades, Reploids are integrated into society. These Reploids, like X, can think for themselves. The premise of the game is that these Reploids have bugs, irregularities, or just do bad things on their own will. Eventually, the Reploids ask, why do I work for humans? And ultimately creates a rift between the existing humans and the new Reploids. Needless to say, this is not a good timeline for humans and eventually creates a lot of wars. Not much we can compare our world to. It's unsure if we can even reach AGI, let alone create robots with free will. Probably won't happen anytime soon. And in 75 years? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna give it a Probably not. I think even if we do reach AGI, it will be in a controlled state and a robot uprising is science fiction. Following the Utopia timeline 200 years later, Mega Man Star Force builds upon computer networking we saw in Battle Network and merges it with the real world. The world has gone fully wireless and information is transferred across a wireless network of electromagnetic waves. The wireless network they have is created by three satellites. Something that SpaceX is working on today without the light pollution and orbital junk. Transactions and connections with other people are still done via handheld devices. There are no more net navvies, but personified computer programs still exist. Unlike Mega Man X, a lot of the nature here is still preserved, and the world is good. There's no AI uprising. In Star Force, Mega Man is created by merging a human and alien. I know, I know, but trust me, the concept is weird, but let them cook. The games are surprisingly good Mega Man RPGs. The alien's name is Omegasus. When he fuses with the human, Geostellar, he turns into Mega Man. Anything with aliens, I'm gonna say will not happen for thousands of years. Like Mega Man X, it's hard to comment on it because it's so far into the future. Let's show off the technological progression of Star Force. People can materialize EM waves into real world objects. We see kids shooting off a rocket into orbit as a casual school project. Other than that, the technology is similar to Battle Network. So yeah, just to summarize, we are closest to Battle Network, and if there's no aliens, Star Force. While we don't have robots just yet, we still have 75 years to go, so the classic Mega Man games are still achievable. I think we will have autonomous robots available to everyone by the end of the century. However, I don't think we will achieve the complete AGI of Mega Man X. I remember when Star Force came out, like the other kids, I did not like the games. But these are good, solid games. Let me know if you want me to talk about it a bit more. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.